Hi class, welcome to Advantage. My name is Matt Fisher and I'm going to be your accounting instructor this semester. Before we get started with the lecture, I just want to give you some advice about accounting. Accounting can be difficult at times, but if you follow the lectures and really try and understand the concepts that are being taught, you should do fine in accounting. Make sure you take your time and don't move too fastly through the videos. Really make sure that you concentrate on the concepts that are being taught and make sure that you understand them in your brain. Okay, let's get started with the lecture. We're going to start with the accounting equation. The accounting equation is made up of assets equal liabilities plus equity. After every transaction that we do, this equation must be in balance. At the end of this lecture, we're going to look at a couple of transactions just to show how this works. But before we do that, let's take a look at the different parts of the accounting equation to make sure that we understand what each part uh, means. The first one are the assets. The assets are what the business owns, okay? The assets are what the business owns. And the assets and examples of assets are cash, supplies, buildings, equipment, land, and accounts receivable. So a business can own all of these things. Now let me point out one thing. Accounts receivable is probably something you haven't heard of before. An account receivable is when we sell something and the person that buys it doesn't pay us the cash yet, but we sold it. They owe us money. So if somebody owes us money, then that's an account receivable. They have an account with us and we're going to receive that money at a later time. That is an asset also. All right, on the other side of the accounting equation, we have liabilities, because we said assets equal liabilities plus equity. Liabilities is what the business owes to somebody else or some other business, okay? So we have a debt, we owe money to somebody. So it's the claims that the creditors have on our assets, okay? Because assets are on one side of the equation, and so liabilities on the other. So it's showing how we're getting these assets. So we can get assets through liabilities, meaning we owe somebody money for those assets. All right, some examples of liabilities are accounts payable, loans or notes payable, wages payable, all right? So you probably are understanding that I keep saying payable here. Payable just means that we owe money to somebody, okay? Accounts payable would be similar to an accounts receivable, except Instead of us receiving money from somebody, we owe money to somebody. So we bought something on credit and we owe that money to somebody. At the end of this lecture, we're gonna see one of the transactions deals with an accounts payable. All right, the next section, the next part of the accounting equation is the equity section. And the equity section are the claims by the owners. Remember, liabilities were the claims by creditors. These are the claims by the owners, okay? Now, the examples of equity depend on what type of business we're looking at, okay? So for your class that you're doing right now, make sure you understand what type of business that you're looking at. So if we're looking at a sole proprietorship or a partnership, the accounts under equity, the equity is, would be made up of the capital account, the owner's capital account, the owner's withdrawal account, so capital account would be money that the owner puts in or items that the owner puts into the company. The withdrawal account, the owner's withdrawal account would be the, the money that the owner takes out of the business. And then revenues plus revenues minus expenses. So it's plus the capital account minus the withdrawals plus revenue minus expenses, okay? If you have a sole proprietorship, there would be one owner's capital account and one withdrawal account. If it's a partnership, that means you have two or more partners, then you'll have multiple capital accounts and multiple withdrawal accounts because each owner will have their own account, their own, own, their own capital account and their own withdrawal account. Now, if we're looking at a corporation instead of a sole proprietorship or a partnership, it's similar. We start with, instead of the capital account, we start with common stock, okay? Those are shares of the business. So it's similar because it's still ownership of the business, but we call this part common stock for a corporation. 
The withdrawal part instead is called dividends. So it's plus common stock minus the dividends plus revenues minus expenses. So those are the accounts that you'll see under equity for a corporation. All right, let's move into transaction analysis, analysis now. Okay, transaction analysis. Almost every business transaction that we look at will affect our accounting equation. The accounting equation, once again, is assets equal liabilities plus equity. And every transa business transaction, well, almost every business transaction will affect this equation. Okay, the equation must stay in balance at the end of each transaction. Okay, so remember, assets equal liabilities plus equity is an equation, it's a formula, and it has to stay in balance. All right, so let's look at our very first transaction. We have an owner, so I'm using an example of a sole proprietorship. We have an owner of a business who is putting $50,000 into his brand new business. All right, so when the owner puts this $50,000 into the business, Think about what's taking place here. Let's look at the accounting equation and how will this transaction affect that accounting equation? Okay, well, the business is getting $50,000 of cash. If you recall, cash is an asset. So assets have now increased by $50,000. So that's the one side, that's the left side of our accounting equation has now increased by $50,000. Now, our equation is not in balance, okay? To balance it out, we need something on the right side of the equation for this transaction, and under equity, the owner's capital account has been affected. The owner now has basically 50,000 in, in ownership in this company. So the owner's capital account will go up by 50,000. So now let's take a look at this, and we can see that the accounting equation is in balance. 50,000 on the left side equals 50,000 on the right side. So with every transaction, we've got at least two things going on that are gonna affect our accounting equation. And the accounting equation must be in balance after every transaction. All right, let's take a look at the second transaction. And in this transaction, the business is purchasing supplies, $4,000 worth of supplies on credit. Okay, so they're not paying the cash for it, but they're buying the supplies. They're gonna owe another business $4,000, okay? So think about it. What's taking place here? What is the business getting? What's happening here, all right? Well, first of all, the business is getting supplies worth $4,000. So our assets will increase by $4,000, okay? Next, what's happening is we didn't pay for these yet, so we have a liability. We haven't paid for them. We owe $4,000 to this other business. So we're gonna have an account payable because we will have an account with another business that we owe $4,000 to. So that's an account payable, meaning we owe money to somebody. So let's take a look at this transaction and we can see that it is in balance also. 4,000 of assets equal, on the other side of the equation, 4,000 of liabilities. So we are perfectly in balance with this transaction too. Now we can look at both transactions together and we can see our assets are 54,000, which is made up of cash, of 50,000 and supplies of 4,000. And on the other side of the equation, we can see that liabilities are 4,000, that's our accounts payable. And equity is made up of 50,000 of an owner's contribution, our owner's capital account. Okay, make sure that you understand these transactions. You need to make sure you understand the accounting equation, assets, liabilities, and equity, the type of accounts that go under each one of these. And then also you need to make sure that you understand how our transactions are working. And the best thing to do is to practice this. Keep thinking about these transactions that we've gone over. Now in my next video, I'm going to go over many more transactions. And once you understand all of these transactions, then you'll have a clear understanding of how accounting works. And you'll be able to apply these concepts 
to similar type transactions. So these transactions that we're going to look at will be very similar to almost any transaction that you can look at in the future. Okay? So for the next lecture, we're going to go over several more transactions. Make sure you understand them because then in future lectures, I'm going to go over debits and credits. And you need to understand the accounting equation and transactions backwards and forwards before we can go on to debits and credits. All right, class, I hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing you again.